Okay, we don't have to work tonight. I think you need to show up there. So let me warn you about that. It'll get confusing. Well, it isn't confusing. First item is our draft <laughs> minutes from the uh, July 13th meeting. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. A second? Second. And fresh? Oh, sorry for that. I forgot it's her picking up. No, you have in your packet. <laughs> make, take, take a vote. Take a vote. Take a vote. Yeah. Did you get the second? Yep. Yeah. Any uh, corrections, deletions, or additions? I wasn't here. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. The first item, real item on our agenda is price chapter plans of commercial drive amendment to final. Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Andy Hart. See, that's why I need Dory. <laughs> Andy Hart's here. Mm -hmm. All right. Tonight with me here is the contractor, um, Dominic Medea. He can help mm -hmm. answer some questions on, in terms of the project itself. Uh, let me just start with the overall site plan so you can understand what we're talking. Commercial drives uh, to, the, to the, basically the south of the site. Uh, Price Chopper sits here, and then the building's kind of sh in the shape of a U. Uh, what we want to do is build two new buildings within the parking lot. One's for Texas Roadhouse, and the other one is for an unknown tenant at the moment. 7,000 square foot retail space is what we think it will be. Could be cut up into two or three different users. Um, this is the rendered site plan that shows the landscaping. And uh, there is two entrances on the site. The unsignalized entrance is this entrance here where the Texas Roadhouse would be located. The front door would be to the east, looking this way. So as patrons came in, they'd circle around and they could use the parking lot here. The second building is located just further to the east. The front door for that building, we assume, will be east as well. And um, it sits a little closer to the road, but right on that 30-foot setback requirement by, by the town code. Uh, if you recall, there's an existing storm drainage pond, dry pond, that sits here. That would remain um, to collect the storm water. Um, for the building itself, the new Texas Roadhouse building, we do have a dumpster enclosed area here that will be sheltered with a uh, CME wall to match the building and the gates since so uh, all the garbage will be hidden behind that. And that one Initially, Joe had a concern about it. I can't remember, but you addressed it. Can you tell us that concern sure. and that you addressed it? Yes, the concern was that in the previous submittal that we made about a, almost a month and a half ago now, that the, when you opened the doors to the enclosures, that they would be out into the drive aisle. So uh, what we did is we pushed the curb out. So now when you open the doors, they'll, uh, they will not be into the drive aisle. So we, we've actually kind of pushed this driveway up a and just for the board, uh, Joe said that was good. Uh, we've also, as a concern that Joe had, was we pulled the concrete back for the pad for the dumpster so it's not in the drive aisle, so it wouldn't be confusing for people driving or changing of pavement to concrete. So uh, we made that change as well. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the change made as well? Uh, there was uh, a concrete pad that's in front of the dumpsters. Mm -hmm. It used to be out into the drive aisle. Okay. And then we pulled it back so that now when somebody's driving into a different kind of pavement material, it's confused. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all the utilities are on site that we'll be using to tie into. There's an existing water service that services Price Chopper. It's metered and backflow to the street, so we'll tie into that just after the backflow. We'll come across with the utilities to service both buildings. There is a sanitary sewer connection that's in this vicinity here. Uh, we'll utilize an existing lateral for both buildings. We'll build a, a, a main across. Um, electric and gas is out of the street, so everything we need is, is right there for us. 
Uh, storm water, we're, we're below a, an acre in disturbance. Um, talked it over with Chris at Barton and Judas, and um, he feels we do not need coverage under the NOT, under the NOI, New York State DEC. Um, so we're just continuing um, with our storm water. We do have storm water erosion control measures that we've shown in our grading plan based on Chris's requirements, without requirements, uh, but we will not need DEC coverage. At our previous submittal, the New York State DOT made some comments as well. One of them was, um, her name was Beth Watts in Region 2. She was concerned that because this width of this driveway, unsignalized, is so large, she wanted us to neck it down to meet the new standards for DOT. She was, a, people were kind of exiting out and creating their own third lane so you could go left and right at the same time and you exit. So to, to con compensate for that, we, we built a landscape island, so we forced just two lanes of traffic now, one in, one out. Uh, she felt that would be better than actually reducing this width and doing all the work within the right of way. This is a, an easier fix for us, so we were able to do that. Uh, another connection she wanted us to make was to continue the sidewalk across the property, so our Plans have been revised, and you can see it on this overall site plan. So we'll continue the sidewalk across the, in front of Toys R Us. So we'll go all the way to our edge of our property. Uh, she did ask that a traffic study be uh, created. We submitted, we had one done and, and sent it into the, to the DOT for review. We haven't received comments back yet, but the DOT. Uh, Traffic study did say that there was no impact on the traffic, existing traffic, uh, that no new um, improvements would need to be made to the plaza or to the commercial drive. Um, in terms of the buildings itself, we submitted a rendering of the proposed Texas Roadhouse. Um, it has, um, it also had a materials we can pass along to, to show the materials on the building. The base of the building will be a brick material, which is indicated with the red in the rendering. Above that will be a cedar siding, uh, and the cedar siding color is shown on there, with a green trim. The roof will be an anodized uh, metal roof of that silver color, and the doors and windows will have a black uh, anodized aluminum. And there'll be a wood frame door, and like I said, the enclosure will be um, a split face seam unit and close to In terms of the other proposed building, we have a very similar building to it that we showed a picture of. It's basically uh, a masonry base as well, just as the other building we had, and uh, EFIS above with storefront light. That's what we're, we're thinking we're going to do right now. Proposing that. So it would fit with the character of the existing plaza. And this. Uh, in terms of landscaping, we did provide a pretty extensive landscape design. Uh, we proposed 18 trees, either shade or ornamental, along with hundreds of shrubs, ornamental shrubs and evergreen shrubs. Uh, we did provide at Joe Booth's request to make sure we comply with the code and provide uh, breaks in the parking in between the buildings with the landscape. So, um, you know, I didn't know Joe was coming tonight, but at the uh, when we met for a staff meeting, this project meets town code in all respects, and Chris. But it actually improved the stormwater uh, situation with what they want or going to do. We're actually reducing the impervious area on site, so that does help yeah. the storm. Yeah. It's got a lot of impervious area. I end up there quite a lot at Price Chopper. Right. And uh, it really rains, it's got huge runoff. Sure, sure. This will, will help that situation a little bit by adding more landscaping and more. The parking for the site is based on an overall shopping center count. Um, 
so we comply with that by, we're actually providing a loan spot more than required. 714, so 715 is what we're proposing. Let's see, the traffic light is at Price Chopper. There's no traffic light. It's just an in and out Correct. at that one. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what about across the street? Um, you know, on a commercial drive. Um, there's nothing there. There's nothing there at the moment, but there's a drive here. Yeah. Is yeah. so that 714 parking space? Yes. Any other questions or comments? Jewish? Uh, I have a quick question on the turn lane to the Toys R Us. Uh, how, what's the reserve capacity? How many cars can you fit in there turning? Uh, we basically have a spot for two cars to pull out of the turn. They have full control here. There'll be no stop here. Okay. We'll be able to just pull right in. The stops will be the other direction. So. Okay. Anything else, Julius? No. Heather? Yeah, you mentioned that on the DOT, the request for the traffic study, you said there would be no impact. I'm sure that's not true. It, maybe there's the impact wouldn't affect what's going on there, but there's got to be some impact, correct? Well, there is additional traffic generated because of these right. two uses, but given the existing condition of the road capacity and the driveways, they felt there was no impact that required us to do any the additional traffic changes. Not DOT, not traffic. The traffic. Sorry. I'm still waiting for DOT's comments on it. Did you get a copy of it at the town? Could you mention that you were going to? We did. We did. <coughs> I sent two copies to Dory. Chris did not raise any concerns about the, that issue. I know that you've got one more parking spot than required. What are you going to do when it snows? It, this is my concern, okay? It's, you got the, it meets code, it does. I counted them, I did everything. I couldn't read the numbers. Um, we didn't have a magnifying glass at the office and so. But the, the biggest concentration, right, of where uh, the real traffic is going to be other than, you know, at Christmas time is going to be on the right hand side there. Sure. With kids running around the trampoline store and I've been at, you know, Price Shopper. And so, so what's the plan for when it snows in that heavy concentration area? I'm sure, you know. Well, there is spots around the outside of the plaza that it's used to store snow either behind the building or to the left of the building. Um, I don't think that, and maybe Dominic can say this, a little more definitively, I can't imagine that they would want us to stack snow up by the street to block the views right. to the mm -hmm. plaza itself. So they would have to relocate the snow and push snow in areas that they're able to, to store. Yeah, because that's been one of the spots where they... They've been storing? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a new owner, too. Michael's a new owner, just purchased the park parcel a few months ago. Um, and I'm sure his intention isn't to block even with these two users, we wouldn't really be able to put snow here because we need that parking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, snow is an issue upstate New York. It's going to be that way. And um, in some plazas, and sometimes you have to have it removed. Have it removed. But uh, we'll do our best to make sure we maintain as much parking as we can. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Yeah. Liz? Um, I'm just wondering if the developer or modifying, taking that one extra space that providing. Um, this right here, this movement, is not a preferred design for a parking lot design because there's it's two at 90 degrees. If perhaps consider losing this space and perhaps moving that a couple feet to give a little bit more back, yeah, backup space. Yeah, backup space. We can look at that absolutely. Yes. That's probably going to hurt a lot of drivers. And we don't see a lot of that in the area. I know that there's a lot of that type of thing in Florida, but. It's a difficult movement for some. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Anybody else? I'll make a move to do the approvals that are necessary here. To grant an amendment to find Yeah. <laughs> Geez, we really missed Dark. <laughs> Is there a second to that? <laughs> I'll second it. Any further comments or concerns? No. Liz? 
No, I just, I mean, I made a suggestion, and I'm wondering if there's, if there's any official way to make, or request that they do that, or if it's too late, if it's just accepted as is. Well, Peggy could, uh, the motion could reflect that. Maybe should mention that. Oh, okay. Um, I'll make the motion with the amendment that Liz's suggestions be incorporated into the uh, uh, approval. Bill? Anytime. Is that all right with you? You're the second that's Yeah. Yeah, you second. And that's an extra space in any event, so you guys can Yeah, we can look at either pushing these up more and making this island a little smaller, or we can eliminate this space altogether and do both, push that forward as well. So we'll back me out on that space. Yeah, because that cheese valley is <coughs> the Well, it's not the preferred. Oh, it's all this too. So is that yes, Bill? Yes. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? That's your answer. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next item is store shop. 4756 Middle Settlement Road. Yes, my copy. This is a preliminary site plan review. Decided to bring a preliminary overall procedure for the Lord Mayor. This is an interesting idea. Well, the answer doesn't go out. Hi, John. Yeah. How are you, Gerb? Yeah. This will be a three plus one diesel, so it'll still only be 12 fueling points, even though there'll technically be 13 handles. Um, the existing curb cut here will be utilized, and the right in only will be added to the south. There will be the striping in red will be removed for the taper length. The length of the taper remains, but DOT's concern was the width of the taper, and that was submitted to them. And we have, that's kind of the one thing that's outstanding right now, is the calculation showing the width of the taper, but the length of the taper is supposedly okay. We did make the 18-foot driveway change that Joe Booth had asked for. Um, in addition to that change, we show a fully gabled uh, canopy. Um, our interpretation of the code was peaked, um, we did a false peak to have the fire suppression equipment, but we've since um, made essentially an attic with a, a trap door. And that, that was a joke, because that was a Yeah, the, the, two, the two comments coming from Joe were the, the fully peaked roof and the 18-foot or 16-foot driveways. And so you met both of those, and those were his only concerns? Correct. Yes. Um, Chris Lawton's outstanding comment was a SHPO no effect letter for cultural resources, which was forwarded to him uh, last Monday or Tuesday. If you don't have a copy, I can definitely. No, we do have it. Okay. Um, the only other thing regarding pedestrian access and, and kind of interconnection with other activities, we do have a sidewalk here that would allow people to um, use the sidewalk we proposed on this side and then further access to trail. Um, but we were unable to achieve an interconnect with the hotel and apartment complex. Um, and that was true also for the driveway access, which is why we were maintaining the existing driveway location. Any questions from board members? Do you know 
the separation between the driveways, the existing curb cut, and the one um, for affordable family? Because it's, it's not shown on the map. I have both plans, but I, they weren't to scale. So from it's 60 feet from the northern end of the right in and the southern end of the full access. Anything else, Liz? No, I, I just, I was out there today and I, I mean, this is going to have to go out to Seeker and all, but it just seems that it's going to be a difficult movement, especially at rush hour with traffic that, you know, com competing traffic without a median for the stacking of traffic, so. But, I mean, I'm sure that'll be picked up in the, the Seeker. Yeah, I mean, DOT's comment um, was the concern about people making the left into the, the site and with the existing taper with um, people not being able to get past, and that's why they're, Currently recommending shortening the width of the paper. With, um, well, oh, sorry, before you go again, the when you eliminate the right-in only, mm -hmm. the level of service drops for the full access. Um, that right-in is kind of a free movement. Right. Yeah. Then I then I understand. Um, what type of signage will pro prohibit the um, southbound middle settlement from using the second driveway? Is it, will there be any signage, or it's just because of the length of the driveway? Yeah, it's the radius on the driveway. Anything else, Liz? No. Any other comments? Chuck, at one point, it was a concern about the distance between where the ramp hits middle settlement and your entrance. Is that resolved now? Yeah, all the all the DOT issues have been resolved except for the calculation shown in the table. And what what did you have to do to resolve that? What was it, 85 feet or something? There's a no access. Right. Um, I just wanted yeah. the board to know that no, you did that. No, there's a no access. Um, when DOT did the taking for the ramp off 840, they had a restricted or no access for approximately, I think it was 85 feet. So that meant that the radius for this uh, access, for this driveway or that part of the driveway, had a touchdown outside the 85 feet. So it's a 33 foot radius. Um, so that means it had to be approximately 118 feet away from the ramp. No access. And you said the paper width was narrowed by how much? The length's the same? Or? Yeah, the, the, this, this inset um, shows that the length is essentially the same, but the width varies. I mean, it's gonna start narrower and get wider as it goes. Right. And how much does it vary from what's existing now? What was the change? That part? Um, Approximately. Again, probably like, assuming that that's the scale. That's not the scale. I, that, again, that's something I can get you. Probably, I'm not sure. I think the, the whole width of the road is like 33 feet. Mm -hmm. So if a standard lanes the 11 feet being maintained on the eastern East side, side. Yeah. Um, so the western side would probably be reduced at points to, it's less than 11 feet, I'd have to imagine it's probably four to eight feet depending on where you are in the taper section. Did DOT give you any recommendations on signing or are they holding off on it? Just they have not weighed in on signing at all. Typically, if you're going to prohibit a left-hand turn on top of the, the stripe down I'll say, um, they're going to prohibit, they're going to, you're going to have to either have a sign that prohibits a left-hand turn into that southern driveway, or if you're not have to sign a similar, uh, you'll have to have signs at your uh, accident entrance on the other side. We I, do I, show, I, yeah, we do show one no left turn sign right here. Mm -hmm. Um, which was a, all of our signage would be a DOT approved sign. Right. The big concern is, is to restrict that access to the limited access to that one road during that. Yeah. No, the, the sign would be provided. I think that'd be a difficult left anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Joe did say that this meets all the requirements for a preliminary application, 
Chris had really no comments other than to say he th thinks stormwater is being addressed properly. On site seeker is going to go out and all that's going to be reviewed in any event. Anybody else? I like that we're doing it. I'm not quite comfortable with the traffic pattern yet. I think it makes sense. But you said DOT is going to come back with some procedure. They also are called. Yeah. 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 They've also reviewed the traffic improvement study that was originated and provided to the town. The only back and forth that's really existed is about the tape work. Anything else? Someone inclined to make a motion granting preliminary approval? I will. A second? This is preliminary? Preliminary? Yeah, preliminary. Mm -hmm. Don't we need to take, don't we need to uh, call mm -hmm. ourselves a lead agent? Mm -hmm. Well, once we get a preliminary oh. approval. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Is there a second? No second. Any other comments or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. The next motion we need is a motion declaring the town planning board lead agency for coordinated uh, site plan review. This is on site. This so, is within our GIS on the off site. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further comments or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.